What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. Attention was focused on the pilot really early on because I mentioned earlier that the the, the plane reached the end of Malaysian airspace, right? It was about mm -hmm. to leave air traffic control. And they said, good night. Um, and then about a minute later, they passed this waypoint and the plane went dark. You have a minute and the plane, and, and in the in the transmission, the pilot whose name is the captain of the of the flight was Zahari Ahmed Shah. And uh, so how do you, in the space of a minute, if somebody had, if somebody from outside the cockpit had broken in and taken control of the plane, the pilots didn't call Mayday, didn't, um, there's various things that a pilot can do to, tr to signal to the air right. traffic control that he's in trouble, right? right. Um, it used to be kind of secret, but then they made a movie <laughs> where the title of the movie was this code that you're supposed to use. <laughs> um, so I don't think that many people watch it though, so maybe it's still valid. Anyway, immediately, the fact that somebody made this plane go dark, it's and, and, it's, some, and it's easy to make a plane go dark from the cockpit, who else could have done it? Sure, because the, the co-pilot was a was a, a young guy who had just gotten tr his training finished. It was like his first flight, um, you know, uh, without having to have a supervisor on board to watch him. So he didn't really know much. It was very clear from the get go that whoever did this knew a lot about aviation, knew a lot about systems, was let's just say sophisticated. Right, mm -hmm. um, and so the, and so focus uh, was on the pilot. Uh, cap, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, the captain. So, okay, what do we know about this guy? Is he a terrorist? Is he a criminal mastermind? Um, is he is he deep in debt? What are the red flags of this guy? And if you look at it, I mean, people have various opinions. It's a subjective matter. What do you think about this guy? I look at him and I see a guy who is pretty chill. He seems like he's got a happy family. He doesn't have financial problems. He makes YouTube videos that are about like how to um, repair a leaky window. Mm -hmm. um, he just seems very relaxed, good natured. Um, people interview his friends and colleagues and he seems really well liked. He's kind of a pillar of the community. He's one of the most experienced pilots from, from Malaysian Airlines. There, th there seems to be a striking absence of red flags. Um, another part of it is that if this was a murder-suicide, which is a heinous, heinous thing. Yes. Pilots are obviously, a, I'm a, I fly recreationally um, and I hang out at airports and a lot of pilots um, also fly recreationally. So I have I rub shoulders with professional pilots a lot and I think that pilots are of a type psychologically. Mm. They are, um, I, I, they have their shit together. You can't be kind of, scattered, right. irresponsible, you know, alcoholic. Um, it just doesn't work very well. Um, pilots are maybe a little uptight. You know, you have to be kind of um, anal retentive. I yes, think, to be a good absolutely. pilot. Um, you don't want to just wing it. Uh, to, I, to I hope they're not semester. winging it when I get on these <laughs> you <know>? goddamn planes. <laughs> Uh, and when they do, you know, you hear about it. Yes. You, know, uh, you hear people uh, get a little unhinged sometimes. But he seemed very psychologically stable in the way that's kind of familiar to pilots. There are cases where people, uh, pilots commit mass murder, suicide. They are rare. When you was know. the last time we had one of those? <laughs> well, um, we had a guy like a few months ago attempt it with Alaska Airlines. He um, he was riding in the jump seat and he like reached forward and he tried to put the fire extinguisher in one of the engines. Yeah, so, but he did not succeed. Was it a co-pilot or a pilot? He was a deadheading pilot. So he had, he was catching a ride to somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, God damn but it. I, I actually did a, I did a, uh, I did a, um, an, a Kindle single about, uh, so Malaysian Airlines, uh, MA370 happened in 2014. The fall, and there was a lot of speculation that Zahari Ahmed Shah had committed mass murder suicide. The following year, a, Ger a young German co-pilot um, was flying, uh, I wanna say from Barcelona to, I'm gonna get this wrong, Frankfurt or something. Um, and, 
anyway, he programmed into the autopilot to descend to zero feet altitude. Um, and he had flown with the same captain before, and the guy had, I guess, had a habit of getting up and going to use the bathroom halfway oh, through no. the flight. So the guy gets up, goes to the restroom. This young guy um, locked the door, locked the pilot out. And so on the black box, you can hear him like banging on the door, like screaming, like, let me in, let me in. And the, the guy just sat in the co pilot seat and just the plane just flew itself into the mountains. Oh my God. Yeah. And it's really one of the strange aspects of that case was that the mountains where it crashed was really near where this guy had gone. He was a glider pilot, recreational glider pilot. And so he had flown on these mountains, um, just flying back and forth along these ridges just for fun. And he'd seen these kind of rock outcroppings that he wound up crashing into. Now, did they find things in this guy's background that suggested he was pretty fucked up or? So, yeah, this is a great point. When they looked at his, um, the the uh, Apple uh, screen, what do you call those things? I'm blanking on it. The I iPad. Oh, oh, look God. at his iPad, thank <laughs> you. I speak English as my native <laughs> language. Uh, they, when they looked at his iPad, they found Google searches for MA370, uh, among other things. And um, this guy had a history of mental illness. He'd actually been um, grounded for a while because of his mental health issues. So um, he believed that his career was coming to an end. There, are, there have been a handful of other cases where people who have like um, uh, personal crises in their life mm. um, have, have tried to do this kind of thing. Um, Zahari had nothing like that. There was one piece of evidence, yes, which is that he was uh, such an avid, he loved flying so much that he had a flight simulator in his basement. And he had done a flight uh, about a month before where he had um, flown apparently a similar kind of flight pro profile to what you would, um, what it was surmised that he did, uh, which was to fly up the Malacca Straits and then put the plane sort of in the Southern Ocean with no fuel. And then, you know, it's not really known. Didn't didn't he have? Correct me if I'm wrong sure. here. On that particular simulation, though, didn't they say that he had just for some reason reset a starting point of a new flight to where that was, like where it crashed in the Indian Ocean, and then tried to fly to like Australia or something? No, it seems like he. It, it the data was partial. It wasn't a perfectly preserved set of data, and there's and there's been a lot of controversy and speculation about what exactly um, it reflects. But it seems like he flew up the Malacca Straits, like paused the game, and then kind of manually moved the plane right to to the southern part of the Indian Ocean. And, and, and the kind of thing that like doesn't really make any sense about it is that if you're in the Southern Indian Ocean or the Northern Indian Ocean or the East Atlantic Ocean, it's like, it's just ocean. It's yeah. all the same, especially in like kind of a low res flight simulator like the one he had. So what is the significance of being over the ocean anywhere? Like what does it even matter where you are? Um, it's not like he was practicing what it would be like to fly for six hours in the dark over ocean. Yes with no kind of goal other than, I guess, running out of fuel and crashing and dying. It seems like a really weird way to kill yourself. Um, Certainly to me. Yeah. For sure. I, back um, quite a few years ago now, but I reached out to a psychologist who, who studied suicide. And I said, first of all, do people, this is a really elaborate like the whole process, which I think I've given you kind of like a simplified version of everything that happened, but it's like, it's a long multi-hour uh, process involving lots of turns and things being turned off and things being turned back on again and overflying Air Force bases and all of this. It seems very complicated. Like, do people kill themselves in complicated ways generally? Because the other cases where people have flown themselves into the ground, they just put the nose down and fly it into the ground mm -hmm. to get it over with. Like, if I'm going to jump off a building, I mean, my goal is to hit the ground, like, hopefully as yes. quickly as possible. I don't want to, like, do, like, paraglide off yeah, the roof and then, gliding. like, release myself on a bungee <laughs> yeah. cord and then, like, cut the bungee cord. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, like, simple and fast, I would think. Um, so, but she said, look, people are people. People are fundamentally unpredictable. And so, yeah, for the most part, people might do one thing, but 
she was telling me that she knew of a case where somebody had built like a chainsaw machine for themselves that worked apparently. But, um, you know, you can't really say definitively that the, you can't rule anything or in, or, in sure. or out based on human behavior. But the fundamental thing about MH370 is that whatever you, whatever theory you want to latch onto, the motivation is 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 not there. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.